Thea is announced to be an upcoming pirate playable character in Genshin Impact, but in the most recent Genshin Impact 3.5 livestream preview, Mihoyo has finally revealed to us what Thea Kid will look like and what she is capable of doing. And so let's kind of go through that because I have some bad news. But before I start it, I kind of want to go through what this video is about and what you can expect from this video. During pre-release analysis, we tend to look at a character from a more negative side. We try and look if they have any weaknesses that will potentially hinder their potential during their actual gameplay. The main message you should be taking away from these kind of videos is that this might not be a character you want to roll on day one or even the first week and you should really wait for people to figure it out if this character is good or not before you pull on the banner. The banner in Genshin Impact lasts for three weeks and there is no reason to immediately pull on day one or the first week. If you are looking to pull Dea for a meta reasons, then she has very steep pirate competition in the pirate slot, starting off as on field main DPS there's Hu Tao and Yomiya, as off field DPS there's Xiang Ling, as a support there is Bennett, and finally if you're looking to play Burger, then you can even argue there's Toma. So they definitely face very steep pyro competition, and let's see what she can offer differently than these characters. Their elemental skill is really interesting. It creates a field that will do a couple things. Starting off, it will give you defensive utility to the rest of your party, including interrupt your resistance, as well as the fact that it will transfer a portion of the damage taken by the characters into their HP instead. Now that's really interesting because that's not really a damage mitigation, but more just a damage transformation. Notice how I said damage migration rather than mitigation, and this is the first interesting gimmick we see with Dea. The problem here is that your overall team is still taking the same damage amount. You're just simply moving the damage from one aspect to the other. It doesn't actually prevent you from taking damage or reduce the damage you're taking. You can think of it kind of like your overall team have a total amount of HP pool in total, and your HP is still going down at the same rate collectively. Unlike characters like Zhongli or Toma who have a shield which prevent you from taking damage, which means collectively your HP doesn't go down at all, or character like Bennett who is a healer, where after a certain amount, your Bennett will be able to heal your entire team back up and therefore collectively restore your entire party's worth of HP, and they doesn't exactly do either. This is a rather unique defensive utility compared to the traditional shielding or healing, but the problem is that I also see a potential few problem with this approach even though it is new and unique. Starting off, the migration is not necessarily one-to-one, -one. your on view character is still going to be taking some amount of damage and at some point it might be enough to cause them to be fatal as they doesn't heal the rest of the party which means that those character HP will always strictly decrease unless you have alternative healing method. The other problem is that while they can heal herself there is a long cooldown on it and there just might be a chance that that healing on herself is not enough. If you take too much damage within a short period of time or you're getting attacked by one shot ability then it is very likely the rest of your party will still meet fatal damage and so while Dea does have defensive utility, it might not be able to save you. I can kind of see where Mihoyo is trying to go with this. To some extent, Dea is like a tank where she tanked the damage rather than preventing you from taking the damage with the shield or healing it back up like a traditional healer does. The only problem I see is that there might be a chance where this is just not enough to be your defensive utility, which would really suck as if you're going to put your tank into your party, then they better actually tank the damage. Now, I'm not saying you can't rely on Dea as your defensive utility. People do depend on seeing shields as their healing people come time get away with running healerless team but if you're gonna put a dedicated damage migration characters into your party and they don't do the defensive utility that well then what is the point of putting them into the first place if you're really looking for defensive utility there are always a lot of characters that can do that like Zhongli for massive shield Kokomi for healing plus off your hydro application and then Bennett for healing plus attack buff so let's see what is the rest of their kit can offer their elemental skill have a interesting secondary effect which is that it will perform a coordinated AOE power attack if your on-field characters on the field is attacking an opponent. From what I can tell, the damage on her elemental skill follow-up attack is rather lackluster and is most likely used for its pirate application instead. Now that raised us into an interesting question. Is her power application good? Is it useful? No. The first problem is that you have to do a coordinated attack, which means you have to attack with something first and then do a follow-up attack, which could kind of skew with how you are trying to apply your application. But the second one is that it has a built-in cooldown of 2.5 seconds, not even ICD. You see, here's one of the thing about ICD and the release of Dandro. Character like Toma have ICD on his pirate application, but because seed are calculated individually, he can kind of get around that by applying power to every seed anyway to trigger Burgeon. On the other hand, they have actual 
built-in ICD. As you can only trigger this once every 2.5 seconds, you at best can really only do things every 2.5 seconds. It isn't like Toma where, yeah, there's ICD on the attack, but you can still kind of get away with it. Daya just doesn't have that ability. You could in theory build full elemental mastery on Daya and just rely on transformative reaction to do damage as it doesn't care about your character's scaling. But if you build full elemental mastery, then the rest of your kit doesn't really get benefit because they scale off HP. And that raises the question once again of why bringing a tank if it's not going to actually tank. And the other question is that sure, power application is scuffed anyway. So you're kind of scuffing your power application and you're scuffing your tanking capability at both time if you try to go that route. Again, I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but I just don't see it working that well with especially how the rest of her kit is probably intended to play out. There's a third interesting aspect about Daya, and that is how her duration on the elemental skill field actually works. You see, this is kind of interesting when it was laid out, and I think it will require more testing for us to confirm. But the way it seems to work is that when you recast your elemental skill, instead of creating a new field, if there's already a field on the field, then it will actually inherit the remaining duration of the previous field, not refreshing it, not extending it, inheriting it. That means, for example, if the field only have 3 second duration left and you cast your elemental skill, the new field that actually gonna get created on the new spot is only gonna have a 3 second duration, but potentially with a 20 second cooldown. And that's look very troublesome. The main problem here is that her elemental skill might run into uptime issues when the utility prevented by said field was already questionable in the first place, both in terms of the tanking utility as well as the pyro damage capability. So, um... Huh. With that in mind, let's move on to her elemental burst, which is where her pyro infusion is going to be. Her elemental burst allow her to transform into a roaring light and attack for a total duration of... 4 seconds. Wait a minute, that can't be right. This raises the interesting question of how Daya can utilize those 4 seconds well. Potentially, she have really high scaling on her elemental burst that allow her to do a massive amount of burst damage within that 4 second burst window. But then we still raise into the question of what are you going to do with the rest of the time during your rotation as your elemental burst does have 18 second cooldown. So you're going to do something for the rest of the 16 second downtime. And how are you going to properly utilize support that have long duration on their elemental skill or burst such as Sing Shoes with his 21 second elemental Elemental burst duration or officials off. There's also the problem of what if the elemental burst just doesn't actually have that good scaling. I mean, there is a chance that the scaling is just not high enough for her to do that much damage for that four seconds duration to be worth it. Plus, it might have the scaling problem. Her elemental burst might be scaling off attack while the rest of her kit, such as her tanking capability, is actually scaled off HP. Which means that if you build HP, then you're not actually going to be doing a lot of damage in your elemental burst. But if you're not going to build HP for her tanking capability, then why bring a tank? in the first place. Even at the beginning of the video, we mentioned how they might have steep competition in terms of all of the available power rule, either as a main DPS, a sub DPS, or as a support, or even just as a virgin power applicator. I think the main problem that I'm kind of seeing right now is that they have very high identity crisis. Is she really a tank that helped you solve your defensive problem in your party? It looked like part of it is, but also part of it isn't. Is she like a damage dealer that can do a good amount of damage by using her elemental burst? And again, part of it is and part of it isn't since it has a really, really short duration and a massive downtime. Maybe there would be a new innovative way that people discover about Daya that completely changes how I expected her to be played and I'm just completely wrong. But at the current moment, what I'm kind of observing is that she doesn't really do a lot of things and even for the thing that she tried to do, she doesn't do it that well, which means she just have an absolute problem with identity. Kind of a hot take, but in my personal opinion, Daya might just be looking like one of the worst characters to pull for in terms of the Genshin Impact meta because she just doesn't really do anything and she doesn't occupy any role at all. That means there isn't ever going to be a reason to put your Daya in unless you just really like her aesthetic and you don't really care about what you'll do with her. I don't know, maybe you can play her in Hyper Bloom or something like that. And that kind of always works. But in terms of a pure point of meta perspective, if you were to ask me how likely would I recommend Daya seeing what her preview tell us to do, honestly, the current score I'll give her is 1 out of 5, which is I would really, really, really think about it before I ever pull on this character. To make the matter worse, they is actually going to be on the standard banner as introduced in the 3.5 livestream, which means that her value is even lower as you can just get her later on eventually in a 50-50 when you don't lose your 50-50 GG. That might be a little harsh and I hope to not turn out to be the case because I did really like her initial design when she was first introduced to us in Sumeru. She was a very charming woman and I, I would love to play her. Maybe I will even high investment into her 
her just to see if I can actually play her because I do would like to actually try her out. But um, if the game doesn't allow it, then uh, no can do. So, well, with that being said, that's going to be the video for today. Hopefully, uh, this video might not be too disappointing. And if it is not, then uh, don't forget to subscribe, I guess, and uh, comment below about what you think. And I'll see you guys next time.